Hello friends. In today's class, we will learn about the first Brillouin sounds of simple cubic BCC and FCC structures. Before we, be we begin, let us rewind the construction of Brillouin sound in two dimension. So what was the principle that we used? We draw the reciprocal lattice, then we chose one origin and from the origin, we draw vectors to the next nearest neighbors closest neighbors and at the midpoint of these vectors you mark perpendiculars so exactly at the midpoint of these vectors you draw the perpendicular and the enclosed region will be your first Brillouin zone similarly for any diagram for any pattern any reciprocal lattice you can construct a first Brillouin zone in two dimension it is quite simple to imagine the first Brillouin zone similarly the second and third Brillouin zones can be constructed let us move on to the case of three dimensional lattices so in all kinds of lattices we will be constructing Brillouin zone in the reciprocal lattice because Brillouin zone is the primitive cell a kind of primitive cell in the reciprocal lattice just like we define Wigner seed cell in the direct lattice we will define the Brillouin zones of the reciprocal lattice. So let us use the same principle to define the first Brillouin zone of the simple cubic structure. So what should we do? We have initially one origin. Then we will draw vectors to the next nearest neighbors. So suppose in the reciprocal lattice I am constructing vectors like this. To the nearest neighbors I am drawing vectors. So what are these vectors called? Any vector that connects the origin with any other lattice point is called a translation vector. So this vector is actually the translation vector of the reciprocal lattice often called the G vector. So all the vectors are G vectors, the vector connecting reciprocal lattice with any other lattice point is a G vector. But what is the speciality of these yellow colored G vectors? They are the shortest G vectors. You cannot draw any other G vector shorter than this vector because there are no other lattice points closer to the origin. This is our origin. So this is the first step that we do. We construct the shortest G vector. Then after that, we will be drawing perpendiculars at the midpoints of these vectors. So at the point G by 2, exactly the midpoint of these vectors, you have to draw perpendiculars. And the enclosed region is the first Brillouin zone. So we will be using this principle to plot the first Brillouin zone of three dimensional structures. We will be finding the shortest G vector and we will be constructing planes at the midpoint of the shortest G vector. So let us construct the first Brillouin zone of a simple cube. So what is the, what are the reciprocal lattice vectors of a simple cube? In the previous class, we derived a star to be equal to 2 pi by a into i cap b star to be equal to 2 by 2 pi by a into j cap and c star is 2 pi by a into k cap these are the reciprocal lattice vectors of a simple cube now what will be the g vector the g vector is given by h a star plus k b star plus l c star so substituting you will get 2 pi by a into i cap into h h times a star plus k times b star plus l times c star taking 2 pi by a is common we will get 2 pi by a into h i cap plus kj cap plus 
LK cap. So this is the general G vector of the reciprocal lattice of a simple cube. So in order to get different vectors connecting the origin and different lattice points, you need to substitute various values for H, K and L. If you substitute the value H, K and L to be equal to 0, you will get the origin. G equal to 0 means the point is origin itself. Now what are the closest points near to the origin? How can you get that? How can you find the shortest G vectors? So you have to choose H, K and L to be the minimum value. In that way, you can construct the shortest G vector. So if I choose H equal to 1, K equal to 0 and L equal to 0, this will be one of the shortest vector because that will yield you G equal to 2 pi by A into I cap. So this is a shortest G vector in the simple cube reciprocal lattice. Similarly, you can find other shortest vectors by choosing different combinations for H, K and L. You can choose H equal to 0, K equal to 1 and L equal to 0. H, K and L are to be integers and if all are 0 then you will get the origin itself. By choosing one value for different, different factors H, K and L, you can get different vectors. So for this combination what will be your G vector? It will be G equal to 2 pi by A into J cap. Similarly, you can choose for H equal to 0, K equal to 0, L equal to minus 1. You can find another G vector. And similarly, you can also substitute negative values. H has to be integer. So, H equal to minus 1, K equal to 0 and L equal to 0 will yield you G vector to be equal to minus 2 pi by A into I cap. So, just like 2 pi by A into I cap, minus 2 pi by A into I cap is also a, G, also a shortest vector but along the negative direction. So, in effect, you will have 6 shortest G vectors which are plus or minus 2 pi by A into I cap. This correspond to plus 1 value and minus 1 value for H. Then plus or minus 2 pi by A into J cap. This is the next set of shortest G vector. Then plus or minus 2 pi by A into K cap. So you have 6 shortest G vector. How can you imagine that? We have a simple cubic structure, right? So the origin is there. Surrounding that you have Surrounding that you have different atoms arranged in a simple cubic structure. So the reciprocal lattice of the simple cube is a simple cube. Hence the reciprocal lattice is, will be of this shape, the simple cube shape. This is a two dimensional structure. You can imagine a three dimensional structure here. So just like that, how many shortest G vectors can you make? In this plane itself you can construct four shortest G vectors. These all are shortest G vectors. Then in the front direction and in the back direction, since this is a 3D structure, you can again construct a shortest G vector. This is in another dimension. This, these vectors are in another dimension in the K, in the K direction, in the Z direction. So we cannot draw that in this plane. So these are the six shortest G vectors in the reciprocal lattice of a simple cube. Now what should we do? We should draw perpendiculars at the midpoints of the shortest G vectors. So we have six shortest G vectors and at the midpoint of these shortest G vectors, we should construct perpendicular planes. So what will be the midpoint of 2 pi by A into I cap? Its midpoint will be pi by A into I cap plus or minus pi by A into I cap plus or minus pi by A into J cap and plus or minus pi by A into K cap. Plus or minus pi by A into K cap. So these are the shortest G vectors that, these are the midpoints of the shortest G vectors. 
Now you should construct planes at these points and those planes, the enclosed region within that space, these planes will be the first Brillouin zone of a simple cube. Now let us visualize that. Here you can see that from the origin we have constructed the six shortest G vectors, one along that direction, one along this direction, one along backward direction, one along frontward direction, one to the upward direction and one to the downward, downward directions. We have six closest G vectors. This is a 3D structure and at the midpoints of that we constructed construct planes. And what are the midpoints? We have derived that midpoints to be equal to plus or minus pi by a into i cap plus or minus pi by a into j cap and plus or minus pi by a into k cap. At these points from the origin plus or minus pi by a into i cap at that point you have to make one plane. Similarly at the backspace minus pi by a i cap and similarly these six planes will enclose a region and that region is the first Brillouin zone of a simple cube. And what is this shape? This shape is a simple cube. So we know the first Brillouin zone, the shape of the first Brillouin zone of a simple cube is simple cube itself. Now what are its dimension? Its dimension, what is its length? From the origin we have moved pi by a to the front side and pi by a to the back side. Similarly, pi by a to the upside and pi by a to the downside, pi by a to the left side and pi by a to the right side. So we have totally 2 pi by a as the length of this cube, right? It is not pi by a, you have to note that from the origin, we have to move pi by a to one direction and minus pi by a to the other direction. So we will be constructing planes at those points and effectively the total length of this cube will be 2 pi by a, pi by a plus pi by a. In all dimensions we will be constructing planes at those points at pi by a and minus pi by a. So the total volume of this cube will be 2 pi by a the whole cube. Its dimension is 2 pi by a. The lattice constant is the, the, one, the length of that cube is 2 pi by a. So I hope you got an understanding about the first Brillouin zone of a simple cube in three dimension. Now let us move on to derive the first Brillouin zone of an FCC structure. So first let us derive the first Brillouin zone of a BCC lattice. So what should we do? What is our procedure? First we should write the G vector. Then at their midpoints we have to construct planes. So in the previous video, we have already derived the G vector for a BCC lattice. The reciprocal lattice of a BCC lattice. It was obtained as G equal to H A star plus K B star plus L C star to be equal to 2 pi by A into H, H plus L into I cap. plus h plus k into j cap plus k plus l into k cap. So this is the translation vector g vector of the reciprocal lattice of the BCC structure. So now what should we do? We should construct the shortest g vector. Shortest G vector is, ob is obtained by putting the short the smallest values of H, K and L. So what are the different values that we can choose? So get, to get the shortest G vector we can choose H equal to 1, K equal to 0 and L equal to 0. By choosing that you can obtain one of the shortest G vector will be 2 pi by A into I cap plus Again h is here, so j cap. So this is the one of the shortest g vector of the reciprocal lattice of a BCC structure. Similarly, by choosing h equal to minus 1, k equal to 0 
and L equal to 0. You can find another shortest z vector g bar equal to minus 2 pi by a into i cap plus j cap. In a similar manner by choosing k equal to 1 as well as l equal to 1 and minus 1 you can find other shortest g vectors. There are also other combinations of h, k and l that will, deal, that will yield you the shortest g vector. So effectively there will be 12 vectors that are very small, very short and those vectors are 2 pi by a into plus or minus i cap plus or minus j cap. We have already derived two of them 2 pi by a into i cap plus j cap and 2 pi by a into minus i cap minus j cap. Two of them were obtained through substitution. Similarly, choose different values of k and l. You can prove all these shortest g vectors are obtainable from that g vector, from the general equation of the g vector. So, similarly, the other shortest g vectors are 2 pi by a into plus or minus j cap plus or minus j cap then 2 pi by a into plus or minus i cap plus or minus k cap. So there are 12 shortest g vectors. This one term corresponds to 4 vectors. What are the 4 vectors? 2 pi by a into i cap plus j cap then 2 pi by a into minus i cap minus j cap then 2 pi by a into i cap minus j cap and minus i cap plus j cap. All these vectors correspond to this term. So each of this term is equivalent to 4 vectors. Effectively there are 12 shortest g vectors. Now what should we do next in order to construct the first prolonged zone of the reciprocal lattice of a BCC structure, we should construct planes at their midpoints. What are the midpoints of these vectors? The midpoints can be found by dividing by 2. So the midpoints are pi by a into plus or minus i cap plus or minus j cap pi by a into plus or minus j cap plus or minus k cap pi by a into plus or minus i cap plus or minus k cap. These are the midpoints of those 12 vectors. Now at these points we need to construct planes and the region enclosed by those plane will be the first prolonged zone of the reciprocal lattice. So this is the this is the effective structure that you will obtain if you do the procedure like that. This structure is called is a parallel pipette, parallel pipette structure. The obtained structure by following the procedure for a BCC lattice is a parallel, parallel pipette structure. Now moving on to the reciprocal lattice and the first prolonged zone of, the, of an FCC structure. The g vector of the FCC structure in its reciprocal lattice is given by 2 pi by a into h minus k plus l i cap plus h plus k minus l j cap plus minus h plus k plus l k cap. We derived this vector earlier in the previous lesson. Now let us construct the shortest g vector. The shortest g vector can be obtained by choosing the smallest values of h, k and l. First let us choose h equal to 1, k equal to 0 and l equal to 0. So what will be the g vector? g will be equal to 2 pi by a into i cap plus j cap minus k cap. So in a similar manner you can substitute different values for h, k and l. Generally the shortest g vector will be of the, of the form 
2 pi by a into plus or minus i cap plus or minus j cap plus or minus k cap. This is the general form of the shortest g vector of the FCC lattice. Similarly, there are also some other shortest g vector. If we construct the g vector, then 2 pi by a into plus or minus 2 i cap, 2 pi by a into plus or minus 2 j cap, 2 pi by a into plus or minus 2 k cap. These vectors are also shortest g vector for an FCC structure. These six vectors correspond to the next nearest neighbor, neighboring atoms and lying at the face centers of the neighboring FCC lattice. So, if we consider the previous vectors alone, these vectors alone, we won't be getting an enclosed structure. In order to get an enclosed structure, we should be consider the g vector with the next possible length. So, we have it, uh, we have here these vectors correspond to 8 vectors in total. Different combinations will yield you 8 vectors. Again, in order to get a closed structure, we need to consider um, some more vectors that are in that are the vectors connecting the origin and the next nearest neighboring atoms. So, these are in total 6 vectors. This is 2 vector, this is 2 vector plus and minus and this is 2 vector. So, in total we have 6 vectors from here and 8 vectors from here and at their midpoints you need to construct planes and the enclosed region within those plane will give you the first Brillouin zone of an FCC lattice. So, if you do the procedure like that and construct the first Brillouin zone, the structure that you obtain is like this as you visualize in this picture. This structure is called truncated octahedron. So, for the BCC structure, we obtained a parallel pipet structure. Then for the FCC lattice, we obtained a truncated octahedron structure. So, I think we should pronounce this as parallel piped structure. And for the FCC lattice, a truncated octahedron. So, I hope you understood the first Brillouin zones of simple cube, BCC and FCC structures. Now, we can in a similar manner, we can construct the second and third Brillouin zones of these structures. If we construct the second and third Brillouin zones of these structures, it will be like this. So, the first Brillouin zone of a simple cube is a cube. Its second Brillouin zone has a shape like this, third Brillouin zone and fourth Brillouin zone. Similarly, for the FCC structure, we, we derived how to draw the first Brillouin zone. Following the similar procedure, constructing the next possible G vectors and so on, we can construct the higher order Brillouin zones. Similarly, for the PCC lattice. So, I hope you get got a thorough understanding about constructing Brillouin zones for various structures. Thank you.